five things you should have in place for SaaS in 2021. Number one, okay, go industry specific rather than feature specific. I had a guy talk to me, I think it was like two, three days ago. He's like, man, Paulson, I, I really love a lot of the content that you're putting out there. I really appreciate it, but I really cannot wrap my mind around reviews. I literally just want to provide reviews for 50 bucks or a hundred bucks. And I don't, I don't want to have to do anything else. And for me to do that, I don't see why I have to niche down. And that's a valid point, right? But guess what happens when you're in that mode of features, you're competing with other feature providers. It's a different ball game. You're competing in a different landscape of competition. You're going up against some monsters, right? By yourself as a small little boat, and you're you're going against battleships, right? And and the reason why I say that is because guess what? A small business owner can go to a hundred other review provider, <laughs> right? There's nothing special about that. They don't see any difference between your reviews versus somebody else. So I truly do not, do not, do not recommend you guys going in front facing and saying, hey, guess what? I can provide a new feature that you haven't fulfilled. Instead, you want to go in as, hey, I work with you know, X, Y, Z industry, and we scale their businesses, or I increase volume, or, you know, I can help with sales and marketing, but here's how I do it. You don't ever want to go in and say, hey, I'm your Facebook ads guy. <laughs> you're you're boxing yourself into the one little, uh, what is it called? I used to call it, um, you're turning into a one trick pony, right? And don't do that with SaaS either, right? Number two, are you guys following? You guys, is this, is this, are you guys finding this helpful? Am I breaking this down? um easy enough to understand let's see okay awesome thanks for the feedback guys you guys are amazing let's see number two make decisions on the feature combination as the niche expert so today is the 17th right we're we're about halfway through december okay all the SaaS tech side the the feature side is going to come out in the beginning of january which I'm aware of, you guys are aware of, and you understand what's at stake. But meanwhile, you're the industry expert. We're not, right? We can be. I mean, obviously, we have some rush packs and things like that in Marketplace that's proven our industry expertise. But that doesn't mean we're actively going after small business owners like you guys are. So what I recommend is this. Draw up a plan for yourself on the combination of features that you're going to include in your SaaS, right? Make your combinations. I personally will make a recommendation of what I think it should be at a universal level, but that doesn't mean that's going to be applicable to all industries. I am personally just giving you a recommendation of bare minimum of three, four things that you should consider, okay? But I recommend you guys being the industry experts understanding what that industry needs, figuring out what is their operational pain point that you want to fulfill and get that done, right? So create yourself your own combination that you think is best for your industry. Number three, okay, and I'm going to go through these just so you guys know. I'm going to, I'm going to elaborate on all five. I just want to layer these out first so we can go into a great conversation here. Number three, create a parent sub account with the actual campaigns. I am saying go ahead and create a sub account, create your combination of messages and have it ready to go, especially when you go into outbound prospecting and you're able to review that with your customer base, your new client base. Okay. Really, really start attacking that. So that way, guess what? As soon as a SaaS prospect is going to say yes to you, now you're not running around staying up till two o'clock in the morning, trying to put something together, right? It's, it's just a disaster waiting to happen. So I recommend you creating essentially a parent sub account. It's almost like your templatized sub account that is not going to be used for anything outside of duplication. OK, anytime you got a new client ready to go, you just go duplicate and it's it's ready to launch. You don't don't actually use it for any clients. So it's just really for template. It's just for a template. Right. Number four, start. And this is what I want to focus on today more than anything else is number four and five. 
I want you guys to start creating your own beta launch with your software for your prospects, right? Start creating your own beta launch. Uh, for those of you that have created courses in the past, you know how important a beta launch is. For those of you that have ever sold a product, you guys know how important a beta launch is. With SaaS offer, especially as an agency, I recommend the same thing. I recommend you putting together a small group of maybe 10, 15 people that's going to be in your beta and really having them as industry experts come together and you being the brain behind it, okay? And I'm going to show you guys how to do this or some things to think about when you do this. So number five is going to be building your outbound messages, your demo slides and offers. And, um, you know, I'm in a great mood today. So because all of you are engaged with me, guess what we're going to do? I'm going to give you some scripts. I'm going to give you guys some actual scripts that you can use for yourselves and go out there and test against your client base. Okay. That's going to be really, really awesome for you guys. And I'll go ahead and post this slide into the help desk and we'll upload it to the YouTube channel as well. So you guys have it as reference. Okay. Give me a one if you guys are excited about my scripts. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So let's go back and review these, right? Industry specific rather than feature specific. Make decisions on your feature combination. Create a parent sub account right away. Create your launch plan, your beta launch, your beta software launch, your beta SaaS launch, whatever you want to call it, right? And start building your outbound messaging, your prospecting. And I'm going to give you some insights to number four and five very quickly here. So number one, Go industry specific rather than feature specific. Okay. And I, I harped on this quite a bit on the last webinar. So I don't want to I don't want to beat the horse here, but don't be a tool expert. Okay. Don't ever position yourself to be a tool expert. And I've said this before, anytime people have got on calls with me and I ask them what they do with their marketing agencies, almost everybody tells me, hey, I, I do SEO, I, I do Facebook, I, I, I do Google, man, you know? And I'm like, great. But uh, the way you should talk about it is like, hey, I'm a, I'm a dental expert. I am a real estate expert. I am a automotive dealership expert. I am a med spa expert. Like that's how your mind has to function even at a normal level, uh, especially when you're doing prospecting and sales and, you know, being in that mode. Okay. Now here's a second mistake. I want you guys to avoid before this happens. Currently you are a service provider. With SaaS, you're a product provider. Okay, you're not a service provider. I know we say it's a, it's software as service. That's because we have subscriptions and all these things, but it's not like your agency services. Okay, so what you want to pay attention to is your fulfillment, right? Don't think of SaaS as a service offer. Similarly, similar to how you do your agency services. It, this is not like you're selling Facebook ads or Google ads. There shouldn't be too much fulfillment, is what I'm telling you. OK, there shouldn't be too much customization is what I'm telling you. There shouldn't be too much freedom that you're giving your client where you're finding yourself consulting on the SaaS that you provide, building out the services within the SaaS that you provide. The whole idea of SaaS is for you to be able to bring a client in, give them the tools, and it's your ultimate do-yourself model. Right. For those of you that's been in the industry, you understand the three big models. You know, it's the do it yourself, done with you, which is consulting and done for you, which is our standard agency services. SaaS is a do it yourself model. Hey, business owner, I've got a tool. It's going to cost you $300 a month. Here's how you can use it yourself. Don't get number two twisted, guys. Don't find yourself fulfilling on the SaaS. You're going to find yourself doing agency services for $300 a month if you don't have this right. Some of you guys are laughing. I've seen this and they're coming back and I'm like, dude, why are we on a support call? You shouldn't have been offering service as SaaS. <laughs> it's the opposite. You're supposed to give them the tool, let them work at it, get out of the way, right? Now, to a certain extent, you want to make sure you're putting them in a place of success. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how to prep your clients to a certain extent, okay? Now, number three, 
let's see. Damien says the truth, 100%, brother. So number three, don't overkill with too many capabilities and ruin the experience, right? I call this the Steve Jobs syndrome, right? Most of us fall into this trap, especially in the beginning of when you start a business, okay? Number one mistake most people make right out of the gate is, oh, how do I create the best product possible so my own customers talk about my product? You're not Apple. Neither am I, okay? We're not Tesla. We're not, we're not giving them a grand experience I and mean, nobody else is talking about this because we're so sub niched into being a provider right it's not a mainstream sexy thing that we're talking about right we're talking about creating efficiency within their own business they don't even want to deal with it themselves as small business owners right that's why i'm saying don't fall for the trap of let me create the best possible product ever therefore that alone is going to drive my business into new sales and prospecting it will not happen and some of you the way you compensate to create the best SaaS is by overkilling the amount of features that you're throwing in there the business owners won't even look at it, <laughs> right? They just want to know how to make money today and now. That's it. How do we do this? That's what I want to know, right? So the three mistakes that I see most people make as they go into the SaaS mode is this. Don't position yourself as a tool expert. Don't think of SaaS as a service. It's a do-it-yourself model. It's supposed to be a product. It's not a service. It's a product. Okay, and don't overkill with the amount of features and think that if you gave everything to your client in that comes with high level, that you're providing something better for them. In my true ultimate belief, less is more, right? Less is more, right? So that's my feedback. Number, these three are the biggest mistakes that I've seen people make, right? Let's see. Number two, so we talked about, let's see where we are. We had, we were talking about these five. Go industry specific, make decisions on the feature combination, create a parent sub account, start and also start your own beta and build your outbound messages. And we talked about these, number one, which was these three big mistakes. Let's go with number two. I'm gonna be wrong in some industries, but I think I'm about 80% right, okay? This is my personal recommendation of what I think you should roll out at a bare minimum level, right? Your default options, in my opinion, is going to be the dashboard and the opportunities flow, okay? The dashboard and opportunities, I don't even look at it as like an additional add-on. I just, I make the recommendation that everybody should just have it. All SMBs should just have it. But the three that I think you cannot avoid is going to be conversations, which is your two-way text, right? The reviews, the reviews management, right? And the web chat. And I'll tell you why I think web chat is important, okay? So let's go with conversations first. Why is it important that we, lo we roll out with conversations? It's important because you're the one designing the message as the marketing agency, not the business owner. There's nothing special about two-way text, guys. It's what the message, the actual messages is what's going to make the difference between you and anybody else, right? You have to humanize those messages and pre-build those messages for them pre-build it all out based on the cycle that they have, right? Based on the operation sales cycles that they have, build out those campaigns, right? So conversations is important. That's something I don't think, I don't think you can avoid that, right? It's two-way text. They're able to do retention marketing however they want. They can easily run a high-level campaign and, and re-engage with their clients, right? Reviews. Why is reviews important? It gives them a macro level picture of the opinion of the market, right? It gives them the idea that, you know what, from an online perspective, here's where my reputation is going, right? And when I say templatized 
templated responses, I sh it should, should have said templatized responses, is let's say a review does come, right? You as the industry expert, Tom, here's what I recommend. You knowing enough about that industry, you can easily put together respond messages and templatize it and give it to your sub, you know, your small business owners and say, hey, when you have a positive response, here's what I want that, how you should respond to your clients, right? If you get a bad response, right? This is really important. If, if one of your clients get a negative review and you as the marketing expert and come in and say, hey, here's how you neutralize the situation and take the conversation offline, they're going to think you are the heroes, right? Which you are because you're going to save that client or at least save their reputation even if they lose the client, right? One way or another, reviews have a say. Web chat. Web chat, you know, I personally think web chat is important because let's say they have a website of some kind, even if it's anywhere else, even if it's not a high level website, right? It doesn't matter. Make sure they have some sort of a in, influx of flow of leads that are coming into the system. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. They need to have some sort of influx of new leads that are coming into the system. Today's combination of features, I personally think if you install the web chat in um, the websites, whether they have a good website or bad website or a funnel of some kind, I recommend you just putting it out there because it's just organic engagement. They may not go into it, but at least there's a gateway there you at least are not closing the door there. I obviously know that it's not going to, you know, generate 200 leads tomorrow. I get that. But they may have organic traffic that you're missing out on, right? So I recommend you at least having something there from a SaaS perspective, something that brings in new leads okay so my personal recommendation is conversations reviews management and web chat the default option uh, i mean almost everybody in my SaaS offer will get the dashboard and the opportunities flow okay and this would be around 297 my recommendation to the smb okay which means this the small business owner okay is that making sense guys is this giving you more clarity and ideas uh, this is bare minimum, right? This is the minimum viable product that I'm talking about. Now, number three, right? I broke this down into four things that I think you should have as your parent sub-account sub is being built out, which is your pipelines. Start with your pipelines, right? Understand your industry and based on that industry, start with your pipelines and decide how those leads transition in that business. Right. If you know for a fact in the dental industry, the leads are phased into four different phases, you know what those are and you launch with those. So that could be, for example, leads in one section, prospects in the next phase, appointments in the next or uh, intro call in the next or a virtual consultation could be the next or in-person meeting or in-person free consultation could be the next right or post-procedure follow-up whatever it is you as an industry expert needs to know what the sales cycle is and within the high level platform when you build out your pipelines phase these out accordingly based on what you know about that industry okay number two create text messages that are humanized, right? And it sounds so silly, but the amount of people I've gotten on calls and interactions where text messages come off like it's a huge email, it's, it's quite a bit, right? So I recommend you taking your text campaigns and humanizing it and really, really replicating a normal text conversation that you would have with a family member or a friend, okay? And the way I recommend you building these text messages out is going to be based on the phases of that sales cycle, right? The text messages the leads get are going to be different than the prospects versus the appointments versus the consultations, right? They're going to all get different types of text messages. And remember, you only have to do this once. This whole setup that I'm talking about, it's really a one-time thing. Once this is built out, you're good to go and you can focus on sales and marketing, right? Then number three, emails, right? I also recommend you 
in addition to the text, also in, you know, creating emails in there as well. I don't think text by itself should function, right? There could be landlines and things like that where that feature alone is not going to stand. So you have to have some sort of email play in there to at least cater to those folks that don't have good numbers, right? So I recommend emails to be included in there. The number four is setting up your triggers, right? Set up all your triggers and activate them however you need based on that sales cycle phasing, right? You knowing that industry, like if you're working in the in the automotive car dealerships, right? Their sales cycle is gonna be drastically different than the dentist, right? If you're in the real estate space, they're, the realtor's sales cycle is going to be a lot different than um, a barbershop, for example, right? So you being the industry expert, you're going to know how they travel in that sales cycle. And based on that, create your parent accounts, create your follow-up sequences based on those phases, set up your triggers based on how that lead is going to travel through that sub account. Is that helpful, guys? Somebody's saying we currently don't have a web chat. Yeah, we do. It's just not a live one. There's, we're still able to capture lead through it. It's just not a live one like a um, many chat just yet for now. <laughs> but it's it's still something that can capture leads. Uh, let's see. Let me go to the next point here. Here's what I want to focus on with you guys is number four and five. Okay. Here's number four, right? Number four and five is what I have for you guys, and this is really important. Start creating your own beta launch with your prospects, okay? Here's some KPIs that I think you should go by, okay? KPIs, key performance indicators, right? You have to, what you measure will improve, right? So here's how I recommend you measuring. When it comes to your KPIs for SaaS soft launch, I recommend you making sure you at least have 200 outbound messages a day. For those of you that uh, took part in the 10 days in 10K um, workshop, let's do a pop quiz. What was, a, what was my recommendation on outbound per day for your agency services? Anybody want to put that down in your chat? Per day, what did I recommend, right? Let's see who's going to get this right. How many emails? James says 500. Bingo. For your agency, I recommend at least 500 just alone on email going out per day. For SaaS, I recommend at least 200, at least for a soft launch, right? <clears throat> per day, right? Now, you're not going to be able to do this with your previous clients. You may not have this many leads previously that you can reinteract with, which is okay. I still think combined between previous and new prospects that you're going after, I recommend at least 200 outbound messages, whether it's email, text, and video all together. From that 200, you should aim for at least eight responses per day coming into you, whether that's positive or negative, eight responses are coming back to you. From those eight, because this is a low ticket offer, because this is a productized offer, I personally think it'll be much easier to convert these folks compared to your standard agency services, right? You'll be able to jump in in much, much, you know, a bigger count of intro calls, in my opinion, and you should have at least five intro calls per day and hopefully scheduling in at least two demos per day. Okay, this is my KPI that I recommend, and this is what I go by myself, right? If I were to go, you know, launch a SaaS offer for my own agency, these are the numbers that I'm going to work with myself, okay? And that's why I wanted to make that recommendation. Uh, James says, can you define intro call, a phone call of some kind about doing business? It doesn't even have to be in context. It doesn't even have to be um to filtered you know some of you guys want to set up a big vsl and a three page application before you get on an intro call D stop wasting your time guys stop just just stop wasting your time get get really realistic with it just get on phone calls get on at least five phone calls and if you can get on five phone calls without 
200 outbound messages, my gut tells me you're going to be able to probably do double 200 outbound messages, <laughs> right? This is outside of your activities. This is your sales team's activities in general, right? So this is what I'm recommending, at least two demos a day. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to show you guys some spreadsheets, some Excel sheets of some finances of that I broke down along with Rob and Alex of what we think most agencies, we really think in 2022, agencies will be able to do seven figures off of this. That's what our opinion is. We, we can show you some numbers of why we think it could be very, very realistic. But I want to also share that with you. And I'll share that with you guys that are staying to the end. I'll break down some Excel sheets of what we think this is really where, where this is really going, okay? So those are my KPIs, guys. 200 outbound messages a day, eight responses, five intro calls a day, two demos should come from it. Number five, okay, this is gonna get a little juicy, right? You guys are gonna really, really, really appreciate this. And you guys understand um, how I am when it comes to copywriting. You guys understand how very direct and basic and simple I keep things. So I, I think you guys will appreciate what I have to share here. Okay. Let's say, Mr. Pena, hope you're doing well. Let's say you're talking to some old prospects. Okay. The way you talk to your old prospects when it comes to SaaS is going to be different versus new prospects. Okay, your old prospects that you might have lost, okay, or you haven't engaged in a while, or someone who simply just couldn't afford your marketing services, right, when you're selling Facebook ads or Google ads or anything like that, right, here's how we're going to do the messages for them. I recommend at the very top, you see that it says text, email, and video, because there's not a huge amount of volume, I really think you guys can create a 30 second video with this script and shoot out videos to your clients, your prospects, okay? So step one to previous people that you have engaged with, it's gonna go like this. Hey, Roger, hope all is well. I'm assuming you're still in the uh, cryo industry, man. I need to run something by you because uh, you have tremendous experience here and I have a huge business proposition that came to me. Need your help making a few serious decisions. Okay, this is going to be step one. And this is for context, guys. This is for someone that you have engaged with. If they don't know you and you send this message out, they're going to think you're cuckoo. Okay. Okay. This has to go to somebody that you have engaged with. And I don't mean just a lead that came in. There needs to have there needs to have been some sort of an engagement. They need to recognize you as your name or your business or some kind. It can be just a random lead that you did a intro call and they decline and they don't even know who you are. That's not engagement. They have they have to have at least done, in my opinion, a healthy intro call or a reasonable demo. OK, that, that they have to recognize. So step one. Hey, Roger, hope all is well. I'm assuming you're still in the dental industry. I need to run something by you. And um, because you let me let me correct this. I've got a, a little spelling error here, guys. I need to correct something by you because you have tremendous experience here. And I have a huge business proposition that came to me. Needs your help making a few serious decisions. Right. So you're putting them in a pedestal as if they're the industry expert, you're not the industry expert, you're going to be positioning yourself as the marketing expert that from their eyes, right? But you're going to come off as if we need them, right? Step two, and here's how the response is going to go. Hey, man, yeah, I remember you. Um, what is this in regards to? He's he or she is going to want more information here. They're going to say, hey, I want to know a little bit more before I spend my time with you. And I'm going to say something along the lines of, yes, Roger, listen, I need your business acumen regarding a private software launch. OK, like I said, this is still private among my partners. So keep this between us and I want to bring you into this opportunity. P.S. Happy to buy you a Starbucks latte or cappuccino slash lunch for your time. This does not come off salesy. 
this comes off as if, hey, I've got something on my table. I need an industry expert that's going to help me make a decision here. Are you guys following where I'm going with this? Is this helpful? You see how this is different copywriting versus when you're selling agency services, right? You're not, you're not coming in and saying, hey, Brandon, can I send you 15 appointments tomorrow so I build you a multi-million dollar business within 20 days with the money back guarantee? You're not doing that kind of stuff, <laughs> right? This is more like, hey, I've got something big on the table that I can't even chew myself. I need an industry expert here, okay? And this is a, this is easy to, this, is, this, this treads lightly, right? Even if you get on a demo. So right here, what happens is this. Perfect. Sure. Um, so step two, they're going to say yes or no. It's okay to say no. But if they say yes, the next thing is going to, the next thing is going to be, hey, love to just send you a Zoom link or a phone call. Either I'll call you because I don't want you to have to call them and then reschedule them for a Zoom. I want you to be able to, ideally, I want you to go right into the Zoom because they have already spoken with you before. You don't have to have an intro call here on this particular one because these are previous prospects. They've jumped on a demo before, right? You can possibly just take them right into a Zoom and be like, hey, love to just set up a Zoom and I'll send you the links. Let them just jump in, go right into a demo of the software. Right now, let's see. Brandon says, is you in or is you in? <laughs> I thought I made a mistake on my grammar, you know, standard ESL classes. <laughs> so, so this is what I would send out guys for somebody that has previously engaged with you. Okay. Let's go with somebody new, right? This is going to be exciting because I'm going to give you multiple angles. One angle by itself is not going to work. You need to have multiple angles here. And that's the same thing you want to apply to all marketing and sales, right? Number one, I'm going to attack volume. You see at the very top, it says volume and it says text, email, and video. You can, you can test out three different mediums in however you want to go about it. Okay. So volume. Number one is going to be, or step one is going to be, hey, Rebecca, wanted to reach out to you directly. And this is, remember, this is new prospects that you have never spoken with, right? Step one is going to be, hey, Rebecca, wanted to reach out to you directly to see if you can take on more volume. I am looking to partner up with somebody in this whatever niche that you're going after, right? So they have no idea who you are, and you're coming in as like a... a Partnership process, partnership proposition of some kind. And only thing you're asking them is about the volume. Hey, can you take on more volume? If so, I, I can send more volume your way. It's almost like you, you're a referral partner, right? Some people go even further. Let's say you scraped a list that has the city on it. You can even say in the XYZ city, right? You can even do this. You can even say, wanted to reach out to you directly to see if you can take on more volume. I'm looking to partner up with someone with, I'm looking to partner up with someone in the XYZ niche around XYZ city, right? So it's gonna come off, hey, Hey, Justin, wanted to reach out to you directly to see if we can take on more volume. I'm looking to partner up with somebody in the cryo in industry around New York, right? Step two, as soon as they give you a yes or a positive response or send me more info, right? As soon as that happens, your next response is going to be, hey, I want to be extremely respectful to both of our times because they're number one objection right there in that moment is oh do i want to waste my time with somebody and neither do you right so i attack the time objection right then and there i say want to be extremely careful and respectful to our times could we jump on a quick two minute phone call to see if we can be a good fit together 
Okay, this is the volume angle. Let's go with the different angle. Let's go with reviews, right? Reviews is where you're putting the entire business on a pedestal and um, making the big assumption that they're a high quality provider. Okay, and this angle works, especially if you're going after high ticket industries, right? And here's what I suggest. Hey, Rebecca, wanted to reach out to you directly because I was reading a few amazing reviews you had on your pages. I've been looking to find a partnership in New York or partnership in XYZ industry. So let's say med spa industry who can provide good quality. Can we chat? Right. So you're making it known that you look them up and you see what other people are saying about them. Right. And because of the quality that you're seeing from what other people are saying, you want to partner up with them. Can we chat? Right. And the same thing applies again. Hey, sure. I want to be extremely respectful to both of our times. Could we jump on a quick phone call to see if we can be a good fit? If they say no, move on. Who cares? Next. Move on. At 200, 200 a day, it's okay to listen to some no's. It's okay. You have enough volume to keep, keep on trucking, right? Let's talk about referrals. <clears throat> Let's say, Justin or Brandon, you already have a couple of clients on SaaS mode. Let's say you have a couple of clients already and you're getting them results or they're generating their own results. Here's, here's how you could leverage a case study or somebody who's actually already performing well with you. You can say, hey, Robert, spoke with your client, which could be Michael, whatever, in a random name. Spoke with Michael the other day about your business and the potential it has. Can we connect directly? Wanted to share how I brought him 50K last month with the few minor changes. Right. This one is a bit more direct. This is based on a referral, meaning Tom referred Justin to speak to Brandon. Right. There is you have the ability to name drop somebody here. And the way you would do that is like this. You want to attack why you want to get on a call right out of the gate aggressively. This is not where you fiddle around for a quick intro call to hope for the best and hear about Sally. This is more about, hey, are we going to do business together today? It's a bit more aggressive. So the three different angles, volume, reviews, and referrals that you can use to drum up your beta software launch, guys. By January, I think by January 30th or even the 20th, like you guys should have at least 10 people that have said yes to you when it comes to your beta launch, right? If you were to start, let's say next Monday, right? By the time January comes around, mid-January, you would have had at least 10,000 outbound emails go out or messages or cold calls or text messages, whatever it is. Is this helpful, guys? It's just giving you some ideas. Maybe even if you don't take my idea, this is getting your gears thinking a certain way, right? Hopefully that's what that's what I'm achieving here is at least even if you're not copying and pasting, this is giving you ideas of the different angles. I don't recommend you copying and pasting. I recommend you taking my framework and building on it based on what your industry the way they interact, right? If you're in the dental industry, because I used to be in it, I can tell you they're hanging out in the Facebook groups and Instagram. But if I were to go after the automotive industry, right? They're not on Facebook or Instagram. They're on their phone. I need to cold call those guys. <laughs> I need to walk into those guys, right? So you know your industry and where they're hanging out. And that's why I think there's an opportunity for you to build on this in your own in your own specific way, right? Now we talked about offers and things like that. I don't want to harp a lot on that on this on this call. Go back to the initial webinar that I did and um, there's a bit more there on the offers or go to the 10K in 10 days workshop we did. We talked about a SaaS offer as well to lead uh, for your agency services. So a few additional notes that I wanna just make with you guys. Have a beta group of at least 10 SaaS prospects at $300 a month, okay? 
that's my recommendation. 300 is a healthy number and it, it should give you at least 70, 80% margin in my opinion. Even if we charged, I don't know, $25 or $50 a location in the future for the SaaS, I still think you guys can sell with at least 7X that, right? So number two is based, so here's the intention for your beta launch, right? When I do my beta launch, I'm going to create two superstars out of them. And that's what a lot of people do. Even if you did like a course beta, you want to basically take two out of those 10 or 15 and turn them into your superstar students, right? Or your superstar clients. And what they're going to be is essentially, these are all industry experts or industry players, right? That you're going to turn them into an agency partner. You're going to say, hey, listen, I've got this software and I want to expand on it. And with your network and with your help, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to give you some sort of a residual commission on this, right? And you got to get creative of how to do that among your industry and things like that. But even if you had a setup fee and that setup fee directly went to your partner, it's still worth it because you have now there's three people you know, doing sales and marketing for this offer, not just you yourself, you have two more people with you. Then the third thing I want to mention to you guys is additional notes is update your demo slides. Currently, I don't, I don't think you should make any changes to your agency services. When you go sell, so let's say Brandon is out there um, in the plumbing industry, and he goes out there and sells $2,000 Google ads. Let's say that's what he's doing. In moving forward, Instead of selling Google ads at $2,000, I recommend you breaking it apart and saying 1700 for Facebook or Google ads and 300 is for you to have our system, our software. Okay, what happens there? What happens is this, that 1700 is going to churn at some point and you're able to keep the 300 for thus creating much better churn rate for yourself. Imagine your agency, if you kept every client that you that you ever had at $300 a pop as they left, right? It's a different ball game. It really is. So update your demo slides with your SaaS offer and your invoicing with your SaaS offer. Say, you know, instead of selling just a $1,500 Facebook ads campaigns all day long, sell it for $1,200 and include a new line item that says $300 for the software. This is, and you can keep our software, Mr. Business Owner. Here's here's the thing, you've got to self-manage it with our own messaging and templatization that we would create for you. But this gives you a, a really good idea of what to expect in case services don't work out, right? That was number four, don't discontinue your agency services, but add it on top. In in addition, initial offer. So here's the thing. When should you sell SaaS? The timing of selling SaaS. And I talked about this on the last webinar. And I just want to review this with you guys. In the beginning of the relationship, you can sell SaaS, right? They're coming in. They're doing a demo for your marketing program. And they can't afford your services. You can bring them in at $300. Hey, listen. You cannot afford our Facebook and Google ads program just yet. We would love to at least allow you to keep our system so you can do your own initial marketing to get your funds up so you can actually invest into bigger marketing play, right? You can do that in the beginning, right? Number two is with together with your program, like I just said, right? With your normal packages, you can add on, you can add on SaaS. Then Additionally, at the very end, let's say you have a client that's on the exit and you know for sure you're not going to save them or they have legitimate reasons of why they want to leave. You can downsell with SaaS as well. So you can upsell in the beginning, you can sell it together with your agency services, and you can downsell with SaaS at the very end of that relationship. Okay.